this week also we released a single ready to mingle a second book it's gonna touch the world amen in fact how many of you here is there anybody here today you're the you came here for the first time i usually do not do that but if you came for the first time can you raise your hand it, it's fine if you came for the first time and you're single okay would like to give you uh give you a book to, but just come up oh okay i guess i'll have to go to you it's just signed too so yeah um, so the books will be available in the lobby uh, if you are single uh, that book is for you if you are married buy it for a single person and uh, we have a limited amount of them there and stuff so um, you check it out those of you watching us on live stream there on Amazon way cheaper than in the church and stuff so um, I want you to rise to your feet open your Bible to 2 Samuel chapter 13 verse 1 and 2 or open your phone the notes of this message are on your version Bible app and for those of you who are watching us or re-watching this message they will be in your description on where you're watching the video. 2 Samuel chapter 13 verse 1 and 2 and if you did not bring your phone or the Bible the notes and the verse is right behind us. Let's read it together on the count of three. One, two, three. After this Absalom the son of David had a lovely sister whose name was Tamar and Amnon the son of David loved her. Amnon was so distressed over his sister Tamar that he became sick for she was a virgin and it was improper for Amnon to do anything to her but Amnon had a friend. I'm going to speak this morning before you take your seat on obsessive love obsessive love anybody who gets obsessed with you in a matter of time becomes possessive of you Amnon was so obsessive of his sister and the Bible called it love that made him sick you know it's not love if you're sick it's sick love somebody said the six characteristics of obsessive love it's when a person cannot live without you obsessive love is when a person demands unreasonable amounts of your time some of you know somebody when a person ignores other aspects of their life just to be with you. That's not real love. That's, that's unhealthy love. That's obsessive love. If they start skipping school, skipping on, on their responsibilities, that is already an obsessive love. Obsessive love is when the person shows jealousy toward any activity that competes for your attention. Obsessive love is when a person follows you, checks up on you and stalks you at your work. An obsessive love is when a person begins with intense emotions, flattery and, in and attention but slowly turns into unhealthy, possessive of you. And that kind of obsessive love we need to run from like from a plague. Because that is not God's love and that is not God's plan for us in Jesus name. Amen. I will let you sit <laughs> in the presence of God. <laughs> Thank you for... <laughs> appreciating that. Amnon in the scripture at this story that we read Amnon was about 22 years of age. David is about 53 years of age and Tamar is 15 years of age. Let's put it in perspective. David is 53. Amnon his oldest son is 22 and Tamar the one he has a crush on is 15. Tamar is his half-sister. Amnon has such a passion for her such a zeal, such an intense feelings for her that he becomes sick. He is a prince. He is the next guy to be in charge of the whole nation of Israel. He is the crown king. But he has a passion that is controlling him. Little did he realize is that the devil used that passion that controlled him to derail and destroy his destiny. You must understand dear friends is that a prince will always lose his place if he becomes a prisoner of his passion. Your passion is something you should control. It's not something should control you. You should become a ruler of your desires instead of be ruled by your lust. Because every person in this room I believe like Amnon has a purpose and a destiny. Do you believe in that? Do you believe you're not an accident on this earth? Do you believe that maybe your dad is not David but your dad is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and he has a destiny for you. He says I have a plan and a future. Somebody say Amen. 
You're not an accident on this earth. You're also a royal priesthood, chosen generation. You have a royal blood flowing through you. But see, devil knows that you are a threat to his kingdom. And so what the devil will do to withhold you back from reaching your destiny is he will allow your passion to rule your life. He doesn't have to have a demon rule your life. As long as your passion can rule your life, he got you on the hook. He lost a palace because he couldn't control his passion. But Joseph was in the prison and he controlled his passions and he got to the palace. See, if you control your passion, you will get to your palace. The Bible says in Thessalonians, I want you to read this together with me. On the first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3, on the count of three. One, two, three. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor not in passion of lust as the gentiles who do not know God. Whether you are in prison today or in a Potiphar's house, God's will for you is to possess your passion. You may say how will this help me to get out of this situation? You will be surprised. Sometimes if you don't know what the next step to take and you do not know what God's will is for the future of your life, who to date, who to marry, which college to go to, this is God's will for you. Possess your feelings. Possess your passions. Do not become a prison of your lust. Otherwise, whatever destiny, gifts and talents, opportunities, education, connections or blessings you have will be squandered if you become a prisoner of your passion. Amnon lost it all, never became a king, died very young, not because he was not a king, next coming king, but because he was a prisoner of his passion, though he lived in the royal, pre in the royal palace. I believe that we have a problem in our generation and the problem is that from a young age, we indoctrinate a young generation that they are animals. We teach them they're monkeys and I think it does disservice to our generation. I know that the school says it's scientific. There's no scientific, there's nothing scientific about you being a monkey. <laughs> the problem with that is this, is animals have flesh without spirit. So animals are ruled by their sexuality. If you teach a generation long enough that they are animals, they will act like animals. That's why our schools no longer teach abstinence from sexual immorality. They hand out condoms and they teach safe sex. Why? Because if you teach them long enough they're animals, you know they can't act like humans. They can't act like the image and likeness of God. So now you have to improvise for their animal lifestyle. Animals do not practice self-control. Animals do not date, mate and relate. Animals don't have weddings. Animals do it when they want it. And when we teach a generation and say that you are born a monkey, you are a glorified monkey, next thing that happens is you have to teach them how to manage their sexuality instead of how to rule their sexuality. But the church has the other extreme. Whereas the world teaches people they're animals which are flesh without spirit, the church sometimes, the religion, teaches Christians that you're supposed to be like angels. But angels, they don't have bodies. They are spirits without bodies. So they don't have sexuality. So we have these people that are going from the school system into the religious system that teaches to deny sexuality. But we're not angels. No matter how much you pray and fast, unless you have the gift of celibacy, sexuality is God's gift that is given to you. You shouldn't deny it or be ruled by it. You are in the middle. You're a human. You should rule your sexuality. Possess your sexuality. Possess your vessel with honor. You don't want to be an angel, but you got to refuse to be an animal. You possess your sexuality. Don't live like a monkey. Live like a person made in the image and likeness of God. And what makes you different than a dog, than a cat, what makes you different is you're made in the image and likeness of God. God placed you as the king over the creation. 
He gave you dominion over the creation. He made the animals and others with his mouth. He made you with his hands. He made them after their kind. He made you after his kind after his likeness and his image there is something about you that's different than any other animal or any other creation on this earth is you possess God likeness inside of you therefore you have the power to control your feelings your urges your lust your flesh and your passion somebody say amen, amen. and so Amnon didn't control his passions Am Amnon was possessed by them he was controlled by them and because of that he lost his palace. I want to challenge you today. Whether you're a Christian or not, you're made in the image and likeness of God. You already have by God import, imported into you a power that, that can control your passions. Now without his spirit it's going to become difficult. But one thing I want to underline about Amnon. I believe in chapter 13 we read it started chapter 13 started like this after this somebody say after this. after this after what after what after this if you read the verses before chapter 11 if I'm not mistaken David commits adultery with Bathsheba and then chapter 12 we see that he gets caught the prophet comes into him and says you kill Uriah and then chapter 13 after this for those of you who maybe don't remember the story, David commits an adultery, kills the man's husband, the, the woman's husband and the prophet comes to David and says because you did this, a sword will come into your house and people will start dying. There will be a lot of mess in your family because you opened the door to the devil through a sexual immorality and through murdering an innocent life. After this, his oldest son for some weird reason becomes obsessive with the 15 year old. Little did Amnon know the battle he's been having with lust didn't start with him. He inherited it. I wonder how many battles didn't start with us. They started in the generational bloodline. Oh no, we're not here today to point fingers at anybody but sometimes you gotta know where the water is leak is coming from so you can cover it. Sometimes you got to know where that stuff is coming from so you can stop it. A lot of the battles we are facing today are flowing through the bloodline. And though we are not, we can't control what has been passed on to us, we are responsible for what we activate. You cannot control what your family, your ancestors did to open a door into your life. But you are, you and I are responsible for what we activate. Can somebody say amen? amen? When me and my wife purchased a duplex of the first year of our marriage, the person we bought it from did not take care of the lawn. It looked like a, a Halloween maze over there. You could just go in there and get lost and there were probably wild animals that lived there. It was so high, it was scary to even go in there. I got my my lawnmower had the, the push lawnmower at the time and it got stuck within the first few feet because it was so high out there. Now I had two options. One is to say you know what, what a bad owner. Look what he passed on to me. Such a horrible guy. How could he do that? You know he's this and that. I could blame him and accuse him but that won't take care of the lawn. Blaming your mom and dad for not being there, passing things on to you that you're battling with right now. You know, yeah, it might make you feel good, but it won't make you be good. It won't change anything. But the second option that I had to do is simply start pushing with my lawnmower, getting rid of that big grass and then trying to weed, to take out the weeds, sow the good grass. And after a few years, when I sold that property, it looked good. See that's exactly where some of you are right now. Amnon had inherited a very bad lawn from his father who committed adultery but all that Amnon had to do is to get a lawnmower and start getting rid of the weeds and start planting good seeds and start taking care of it to pass on to his children a new legacy, new habits and new blessings. 
maybe something got passed on to you maybe the things you're battling with are the exactly same thing that's happening in your family I want to encourage you today yes it's not easy but God is on your side and you are not responsible for what's passed on to you you are responsible for what you're gonna do with it are you gonna cry about it or you're gonna start pulling weeds push the lawnmower and start sowing some seeds and pulling out weeds yeah the Bible says Amnon he didn't realize he was in a spiritual battle you have to understand repeated sexual sins have demons behind them behind every farmer behind every tomato is a farmer tomatoes don't grow on their own somebody cultivates them behind every repeated sexual sin is a demon who cultivates it behind every Delilah is a Philistine hiding behind the couch waiting for you to be lured into sleep in fact it says in Judges chapter 16 afterwards it happened that Samson loved the woman in the valley if you're in a valley it's not a good time to fall in love it's a good time to get out of the valley and he fell in love in the valley that's why Joseph did not get married did not get married in prison he waited to get to the palace whose name was Delilah and the lords of the Philistines came up to Delilah and said to her entice him find out where his great strength lies and by which means we can overpower him that we may bind him to afflict him and every one of us will give you 1100 pieces of silver can I tell you something that lust is on the payroll of the devil pornography gets a very good compensation for trapping you sexual immorality fornication adultery is sponsored by the devil it's, it's 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 a thing it's not just automatically it's not just your feelings there are philistines behind the couch while you're over there on the computer experiencing what you're experiencing there are demons hiding behind the couch who are paying that thing so that they can entice you trap you and hurt you because demons know if they don't do that to you, you'll do that to them. Demons know you're the Amnon, you're the next in line for the kingdom. Demons know your future more than you know your future. And they will use a Delilah to entrap you. They will use a sexual sin. They will utilize, they will, they will play with the flesh so that you can fall for it. But today we've come to serve the devil and notice. We're not going to fall for the Delilah. We're not going to fall for lust. Why? Because we know that we have a purpose. We know that we have a destiny. We will live in purity even though we struggle and get tempted but God is on our side and the spirit of him who raised Jesus lives inside of us. He is greater than any temptation. Do you mean that if I fall into the same sexual sin I, I'm demon possessed? What we mean is that you probably are demonized. Demonized is being controlled in a particular area of your life by a demon. It doesn't mean that you're owned by a demon. It means controlled. How do you know if you're controlled by a demon? It's very simple. It's the area of your life you have control no over. Okay, let me word it better for English. <laughs> it made sense in my mind. When the person comes in and says, how do I know if I have a demon? Now, demons cannot have Christians. Holy Spirit has us. But Christians can have demons. It's not play your words. It's, you can be oppressed, but you're possessed by the Holy Spirit. You can have a demon. And how do you know where that demon is at? It's the area of your life demons control. Which area is that? It's the one you don't control. Have you, have you heard people say things like, you're out of control in this area. For example, somebody blows up in anger and the wife says, you're out of control. Or they say, I don't know what happens to me. I lose control. You didn't lose it. Somebody took it. The area you lose control over it is the area somebody else already has control. A demon. So stop blaming it on this and that, your personality. You have to understand, if you lose control in the area of lust, if you lose control in the area of anger, if you lose control and you go flying and you don't know what happens to you, now you know. You didn't lose it somebody else took over and it's a demon it doesn't mean that holy spirit doesn't live in you it doesn't mean that you're demon possessed it just simply means that a demon in that area ru runs your life and you can declare war you can overcome you can fight but see you can't fight if you don't know what you're fighting 
you gotta stop shadow boxing you gotta know that this thing is not from Jesus this thing is not from me it's from the devil and I gotta cut that off I gotta fight that I gotta remove that and I gotta win a battle in the spiritual realm to win a battle in the realm of the physics somebody say amen when they asked Eskimo tribes and, and how they would catch wolves they said that you know to catch a wolf is not easy but they had this trick where they would put a knife and dip a knife in blood few times have the blood dry up dip the knife in blood again have the blood dry up and you know wolves when they smell blood they lose their rationality they can't think straight and they would put that knife and they would secure that knife in something strong and, and tie it up and put it into the ground and they would leave and let the blood manipulate the nature of a wolf and the wolf would smell blood he doesn't even think he doesn't his eyes no longer see because his urges have taken over he would come and he would start licking the knife not realizing it's a knife and then by the time he realizes that it's a knife it's too late because now he's swallowing his own blood and then the wolf would die the devil will not come to you and I during the night with horns because you know what that will make you do father in the name of Jesus father God no, 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 no. Yeah. devil is afraid of that he won't do that he's not an idiot devil is not gonna come to you with a fork when you're walking down the alley with the fork because what's gonna make you do that you're gonna start praying you're gonna start rebuking devil doesn't want to do that he will never use something that will make you pray he will use things that will make you stray what are those things it's things that we don't expect we see blood we don't see a knife we see porn image we don't see a demon behind it we see sleeping with the girlfriend we don't see the what it's gonna lead to we see a flirtation in the office we don't see that there's Eskimo tribes there's demonic tribes that are behind that and today God wants to make you a possessor of your passion a possessor of your passion that you have spiritual eyes that you see my friends if you don't control your eyes Satan will take them the Bible says Samson he didn't control his eyes he saw he saw he saw he saw he saw too much and the devil took what he saw and then he went blind control your eyes or the devil will control them Job says I made a covenant with my eyes I'm not gonna lustfully look at the young virgin what does that mean that means that I make a conscious decision I possess my body my body doesn't possess me I possess every organ in my body those organs don't possess me and if there's something that I lose control over I know it's a demon so I seek spiritual help but can I also mention something on the practical sense it says in here verse 2 of chapter 13 that he was sick over his sister for she was a virgin and it was improper improper means it was not right for Amnon to date or be with his sister well for most of us like duh dude is half sister you you're crazy you would and she's 15 for crying out loud in those days things were a little bit different in Leviticus it says that God prohibited Israel for people to date marry within their family so God prohibited like stepsisters, stepbrothers, they couldn't do that. So what do you do when you have a crush on somebody and God's word says no? I know you probably don't have this problem, but I'm pretty sure you've had a crush on somebody that God's word is very clear, not good. Well, your parents told you not good <laughs> or somebody else told you this is not good for you. They're not a believer for example or maybe they're the same sex or or something else but you have strong feelings what do you do now if you're not a believer if you're not a follower of Jesus Christ what do you do well you do nothing you let the feelings take control why because in Christians God is love but if you're not a Christian love is God what love wants love gets there are people applying for a marriage license with the horse in the United States there is a person that's applying for a marriage license with his laptop this is real you can google it and you know why because they say well if a man can marry a man because of love why can't I marry a horse because of love and who are you to judge 
why anytime you make love a god we're gonna have a twisted society because anything you love becomes legal love becomes the moral standard my god is love but love is not god can somebody say amen and so what i want you to see here as a believer now if you're not a believer for example and you know you're attracted to the same sex or you you know honestly you can do whatever you want the reason why is because you are your own god so whatever you come up with and you usually come up with rules as you go whatever you come up with honestly i stand aside and i will not judge you why i don't judge fish for swimming and fish fish for swimming birds for flying men for walking on the ground and i don't judge sinners for sinning it's who they are we don't judge but if you are a believer who submitted and whose God is not you but the one who lives in heaven whose Savior is not you but the one who died on the cross then you have to submit your biology to your theology your sexuality to your spirituality your feelings to your faith your chemistry to your Christ why because you have a God and he is your savior maybe some of you are saying well this is a good moment I want to switch the camps I don't want to be a Christian I don't want to tell God to tell me what to do remember if you make yourself a God you also have to be your savior good luck most of you will realize by the time you get 30 you're a terrible God and when you die you realize you're a horrible savior because you can't save yourself don't try to control your life see the best thing of us as Christians we understand is this is that yes is sometimes our flesh wants to do certain things and when we submit to God you know it maybe brings a little pain to our flesh but we know that God is good what he wants is good we we me and my wife we have a dog and they done a study and they said that dogs have 300 million olfactory receptors we have six million so dogs the brain in the dogs uh, the part of the brain that analyzes the smell is 40 times bigger than in my brain so the smell part in the brain in the dog is 40 times bigger than mine and they have 300 receptors 300 million receptors where I have only six million so you can imagine one thing when a dog comes in he smells things on the level I will never ever be able to comprehend so because of that he is drawn to things based on his senses and his smell for example our dog he doesn't differentiate between underwears and sandwiches he doesn't he doesn't differentiate between pork and between his food I remember one time they made waffle for a previous internship they made waffle to sell for the mission trip and Saul left the waffle on the on the kitchen table and the dog during the night went in and he marked all the stacks of waffle on every single stack don't worry you guys already ate them it's, it's been about seven months <laughs> I'm just kidding we didn't sell those <laughs> we did not sell those relax <laughs> he marked all of them now it tasted good it smelled good and then Saul woke up and Jekyll was dead he laid there he couldn't move he she thought he died because of all that he ate see he doesn't understand a lot of times on Mondays is when Jacko doesn't eat he lies sick and he look, looks dead why because on Sunday when we take him to my parents house he eats from our table he doesn't control he he lets his feelings he lets his urge and his his senses tell him what to eat and then he pays for it on Monday therefore he has people that care for him and they put a leash on him and the leash that we have on him it's not because we hate him we love that sucker the leash we have on him it's not because we want to kill him it's not because we want him not to have fun it's that because we know if we don't control those urges he will kill himself see your theology is a leash on your biology put it on control yourself control your passions or they will destroy your life if you let your sexuality run rampant you will kill your spiritual life you will kill your financial life you will kill your physical life you will get things you don't want in your life because you have to allow your spirituality put a leash on your sexuality 
your faith to put a leash on your feelings your choices to put a leash on your chemistry you can't let it run around rampant why because you're hurting your life can somebody say amen and so what Amna needed to do is Amna needed to realize I'm a prince I need to rule my passion hey I got some generational things attacking me I gotta fight in the spiritual realm and you know what God says it's not good but I like her I need to come to God and say Lord I like Tamar she's only 15 I'm embarrassed to even say that I like her but I do your word says it's a sin but my flesh says I want it God I submit my flesh my craving my passion this excitement raging in my body I submit it to you and please help me to get over it all it took was that kind of a prayer the Bible says in James chapter 4 verse 7 submit yourself to God and then resist the devil and he will flee if you're struggling with lust if you're struggling with feelings for someone or something that you're not supposed to have feelings for can I just tell you something it's more spiritual than you realize can I just tell you something you were fashioned by God to possess your passions and can I tell you something right now can you be real with God and come and talk to God about it can you get on your knees at least one time and not just cry in the pillow after you fall into that sin but cry on your knees to Christ and say God I'm battling with it I'm sick with it God but I cannot do it on my own I submit this to you help me God sometimes just crying out help me can do so much more than not doing anything can you, are you with me see they say that things that are passed on from your family you cannot deactivate for example the color of your eyes color of your hair color of your skin you can't deactivate it there, there is nothing you can do to deactivate unless you get a surgery or you go dye your hair but naturally you can deactivate it but there are things in your genes like characteristics from your family that you can deactivate based on three things experiences choices and your associations everybody say experiences choices and associations so we already said choice when you make a choice to submit to God when you realize that what you're feeling is not in line with God's word but another thing is associations I want you to see one thing about Amnon verse 3 but Amnon had a friend the curse that Amnon was battling with could have been broken if instead of indulging in his lust he would have cried out to God and say God I'm hurting God what I'm feeling is wrong but I feel it but the second thing that I believe reinforced this curse is the fact that Amnon did not go to the right people for help he went to people who actually spoon-fed this lust he had a crazy cousin Jonadab who actually when he heard that his cousin had a lust problem instead of saying hey dude snap out man that's wrong you're gonna be the next king you really want to lose your life over a 15 year old come on bro this is not right first of all that's not even dude come on slap out are you okay let, let's go out let, let, let's go play some ball man let's 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 go to the pool or something let's go run let's go come on man you need to you need to clear clear your head don't do this man you you're a king man I mean people would die to be in your position you and you want to lose that over that God says it's wrong don't don't do that man let me pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus come out your spirit of lust what Jonadab does is he says oh you, you like her let, let me tell you something if you do this it will work 100% what you do is you pretend to be sick see craziest people's advice is always to pretend something when your daddy calls hey how you doing I'm fine when your home group leader calls on Tuesday say hey come to a home group I'm busy stranger things season three is out on Netflix busy when 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 Sunday morning comes in you begin to pretend I'm offended at that church why I, I can't go to that church why because I am very offended well you're offended also for your schoolmates but you still go to school you're offended in the gym because there are some people who really don't are not there to work out but just simply take photos you still go to the gym every place you go to you get offended but you still go there so you pretend to be offended and that's why you don't want to go because what happens is the devil will always send you crazy cousin who will teach you how to pretend why to pretend so when David comes and asks you how are you doing you will avoid honesty 
transparency and being truthful so you can protect that lust and so it can grow because lust cannot grow without crazy cousin and he tells him and then I want you to get Tamar alone and then pretend that you're sick ask her to make her favorite pancakes and when she makes those ask everybody to leave and then well let the lust will do the rest he didn't even tell him what to do then why because once you give spoon feed the lust it will take over from there and then he rapes this girl and then he hates her afterwards so bad that he drives her out God will surround you with mentors for a reason because you can overrule your nature through nurture the nature of lust the nature of divorce the nature of anger and depression can be broken through my choice and through my association devil knows that and that's why he wants me not to submit my biology to my theology he doesn't want me to submit my feelings to God he wants me to hold them and try to say well God didn't mean what he said that God is love and all of this stuff he wants me to twist God's word into my my image and my likeness but the secondly he will always have a Jonadab but Amnon had a friend it's a friend that will advise you to do bad it's a friend that will tell you don't tell this to a pastor don't you dare to tell it to your mom and dad don't you dare to tell it to that guy why because they're gonna spread gossip about you and they really want to protect you from someone who can help you they'll tell you but David committed adultery and he killed Uriah don't tell him anything about it the devil will always say oh don't tell anybody who can help you why because they're not perfect themselves so that you can keep it all to yourself and then you can get yourself in trouble a python is a very unique snake in the bible it mentions a spirit of a divination in acts chapter 16 verse 16 and another word for divination is a python they say python produces the most eggs than any other snake in the world but there's there's something about python's eggs is they cannot hatch in any environment they need a particularly warm environment for those eggs to hatch in fact most of python's eggs never hatch because either it's too cold or it's too hot devil knows that every idea he plants everything he plans against you cannot hatch without crazy cousins and fake friends he needs them there to cook the atmosphere because he can't do anything without it I want to tell you something today bad company corrupts good habits some of you you will be delivered if you only remove some toxic people from your life you will be delivered if you only leave Jonadab and say Jonadab you know what when Jonadab asks you how you're feeling you say praise the Lord I'm fine but when David asks you how you're feeling say I am sick with love for Tamar I struggle with spirit of perversion and lust deliver me and that curse will be broken you need community people reach out to us all the time and say hey pastor pray for me I need deliverance I said do you go to church you know there's no perfect churches there do you go to a life group you know I just don't have time and I know it's Amnon working on the advice of Jonadab pretending he's busy pretending no perfect churches are there around he's opening himself up to all other bad friends you can get prayed by somebody on Instagram and Facebook all you want to but if you don't submit to community if you don't become vulnerable if you don't develop some Christian friends my friend all of that lust cannot be broken over your life that's why Paul says in 2nd Timothy chapter 2 verse 22 pursue love, pursue purity run from lust with those who call upon the name of the Lord you can't be pure in a vacuum you can only be pure in a community thank you for watching this content I know this was a blessing to you we would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell on our channel so that each time we upload something you can be notified. Don't forget to share this content with your friends and family and on social media. We're so thankful to you. Better is not good enough. The best is yet to come.